Okay, so welcome everyone to this first session of the OUNI Community Hours of 2020. Uh, sorry, 2022. <laughs> uh, we have the new OUNI version released just a few hours ago, 2022.01. We will be reviewing what's new. Then Vladimir is going to talk, to talk about how to change the proxy used for clients from the web user interface. Ornella will explain the latest changes in the, docu in the documentation, and then we will have the usual session for questions and answers. So you can ask anything or comment anything that is on your mind. So let's get started with the new Uni version. What's new in this version? Well, first of all, the support for Debian 11 as client. Right now, all Pretty much everything is working. Of course, bootstrapping, package management, patching, CB, auditing, monitoring, formulas, applying the high states, running salt commands, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. There are some minor limitations. For instance, we still don't have ready the product identification because we still need to change the Java code or the identification of the vendor for the packages is not ready either. We still need to modify the SQL code. And Open SCAP will not work, but in this case, it's because Debian 11, unlike Debian 10 and the next Debian 12, does not have this package. At some point during the development, they removed it from Debian testing, and as a consequence, this package is not available. Uh, it is still not clear what is going to happen to it, but for now, the SCAP security guide is not able to build and you cannot install it to, to use it. But other than that, everything is working fine. What you need to know is that Debian 11 will only support the new salt bundle for management, but we don't have any more dev packages for salt minion or for salt master as part of the client tools. And the reason is that Debian is shipping a salt version, which is newer than ours. And to avoid any kind of conflicts, now we have the Python bundle. That said, this is fully transparent for you. You don't need to do anything special. You just bootstrap and it will work as it was working in the past. Of course, if you want to make any questions, feel free to interrupt me. So the next, the next thing are the links to the vendor security advisories in the details page for the patches. If you want to know more about this, remember that it was presented by Thomas in the last community hours in November. The recording is available at the YouTube channel. Another interesting thing is that now when you are bootstrapping and then for managing the, the minions, you can specify any TCP port and not port 2020, sorry, 22 as it was in the past. And then finally, one thing that Vladimir is going to present after me, which is how to change the proxy that is used for the clients from the web UI. So basically you can migrate one client from one proxy to another proxy. And those are the big, the big news for Uni. Of course, there is some bug fixing, um, but those are the big changes. So, now we have some time for questions about the new stuff. If you have any questions. So the only thing that I was going to uh, comment about was the salt bundle. <clears throat> um, just that I have uh, Installed it a couple of times to my Uyuni clients, and uh, I'm not finding that it successfully disables the old salt minion. <clears throat> Do we have Victor here, or Pablo, or anyone from the own squad? Doesn't seem to be the case. I think that the default should be that the old minion is disabled. What do you mean by disabled, by the way? Well, 
if I look at the results of the service apply, um, which actually I can show you here if you want to see it. Because what I seem to remember from the presentation from Victor, but maybe I'm wrong, is that the service itself for the salt minion is maybe not disabled. Yeah, so here's an example of a server name, Cornelius, a single server on my Uni server. And I followed the documentation which says to uh, apply the salt state with no specified pillar, okay? Mm -hmm. which so you, it's not you yeah. super clear, uh, you know, so it doesn't give you actual command syntax, but this is my command syntax. So I chose just that server, it's state.apply, and then the name of the, of the state. And you can see that it returned back that it installed these packages. Um, this I found quite interesting that it installs libvirt libs. Uh, so you may end up with some interesting, uh, in the bootstrap script, it did not successfully install that. And uh, it does on the state though. And then you can see it installs the VNV, VNV salt minion um, from the bootstrap repo. Mm -hmm. So then it, uh, it copies the old minion ID um, into the new package, right? So it's in a different directory. It copies the any configs from there. It copies over the the keys from PKI minion minion asterisk. So so that way it's reusing the same security key that's already been accepted on the Uyuni server. And then it's a, it enables the service for the VENV salt minion uh, and it starts that and then it's supposed to disable the salt minion service and stop it but uh, unfortunately when I checked on my on my client system uh, salt minion was still running from this service I had to do some manual killing off in order to get it to go and then you'll find in the docs that it asks you to add this option where you're purging the non-VENV salt files, um, but I'm not really seeing it do any of that. So, yeah, it, it, right. it did not was not successful actually. <laughs> but you no, know, it is running. So I mean, my client is working. And uh, it converted it over, and it is using the new packages. But it was just interesting to have that experience. It's my first time to play around with it. But this don't uh, open source uh, Lee. What operating system? Yes. Uh, this is Leap fifteen three. Hmm. Well, first thing is, did you create already a bug report? Ah, <laughs> you bet. Yeah. Okay. It's going to happen. I just did that this morning. So, no, I haven't <laughs> okay. built it yet. Yeah, no problem. Because as soon as we have it, I think that the salt guys will start having a look. Uh, yeah, this is not expected at all. Yeah, see, when um, I was done, I looked for salt, and you could see this is still out of the old minion, right? That it was still running. And uh, this is the new stuff here. Don, so I ended check? up having to manually do this thing and it killed it off and now and now it looks right. You know, this is the way it's supposed to look. Don, did you check if Salt Minion was pointing to still Susie Manger Salt Master? This old Salt Minion? I'm asking because this is one main use case for Salt Bundle that we want to coexist with any Salt right, Minion. Right, right. Yeah. So yes, have a look if uh, old salt minion is still pointing to salt master that we have in Zuzi Manger. If not, then we are already. Yeah, it is. It's still out there. Okay. Right? Okay. So, then it's a bug. Yeah. Because you know that's where it specifies the master, which is my proxy mm -hmm, in that mm -hmm. building, right? So yeah. yeah, it's still trying to go back through. So yeah. Anyways, 
I wanted to share at least a little bit. You know, the good part is that the state installed the right packages and it moved all the stuff over and my minion is actually talking to my server. So the bad part is that it it didn't stop the other stuff yet. So that's my that's minor, but you know, it was kind of cool to see it get played with a little bit. I have not yet messed much with the bootstrap script side of it. So I just did some initial experimentation with it, but is there anything, I mean, and I'm running um, 2021 .12, so I'm not yet running the one that was released today. Was there any changes that were made in this latest version, or was it the same version for that stuff? Do you know? As far as I am aware, there is no bug fix from, for this, but could be that I missed it. Yeah, I think not very many people are using it yet, but um, in any case, I just wanted to ask about it because it's, it's a relatively new thing and and I was just playing with it, so. I think someone is trying to talk, but I cannot. Yeah, I think it's Simon. Simon? Anyway, meanwhile, I was reviewing the change log for the VM Salt Minion, and I don't really see anything about this this problem. So yeah, yes, yeah, report it, and we okay, will have a look. Okay, off we go. Hopefully, I didn't take too much time uh, there, but thanks everybody for including it. It's it's cool technology that will enable us to have uh, multiple salt masters and. Um, yeah, and um, I, like you said, on the Debian side, contain uh, the delivery so that it's not not going to conflict with um, packages that they may get from upstream salt or through their own channels. By the way, you just reminded me that I should update those or that issue we have about conflicts between zero MQ for salt and IPEL. I think it was in CentOS seven because that's yeah. As of today, that's not a problem anymore as long as the user is using the bundle. Yay! So, <laughs> I need to really update those those bug reports. I will do it after the meeting. Okay. So, more questions? I have a question regarding the ARM release of Uyuni. So, it's not directly uh to the new release but i just gave it a try a couple of days ago and i was just wondering because i think it was mentioned in one of the last community hours that it should basically work on on arm and i was just trying to figure out whether somebody of you already managed to get it working correctly i'm not sure i think we, yeah we have eric bishop uh, here yeah i uh, think you uh, as client or as a server? As client, I tested it and it works. Okay, because I'm trying to get um, the server version working. I think that's not supported. Uh, and I tested with Susan Manager, not with Uyuni. Okay. But that okay. should be the same. Yeah, for Uyuni, it should work, but at least internally, I think we still didn't test it. So packages are there. If you find something that is not working, I would say that e even if it is not marked as stable and ready for production for units, etc., et it would it would be really interesting if you report your findings. So we can at some point at least have a look or maybe mm -hmm. guide the community so someone else can have a look as well and try to fix it. Yeah, definitely. I will I will do this because it's it's working good in, in terms of you can install it and you have the UI and you can which is the um, channels, but as soon as you try to import a big channel such as OpenSUSE, which has, I think, something around 40,000 packages, then the, the, the database just crashes and it's it's unable to find its version and therefore Uni isn't able to re restart or reboot after a couple of minutes. So I think that's something that could be fixed easily. Yeah, so I'll open a back report for that because I'm wondering if uh, it also depends on how much memory you have. That could be causing a problem as well. Yeah. Because yeah. RepoSync is using an, 
memory. I cannot recall how much memory, but it's it's heavy. And if the database at the same time is using a lot of memory, maybe you just had some out of memory errors, and that is what causing the, the troubles. That's a very good point. Uh, I have a Raspberry Pi four with eight gigabytes of memory, and I, I've. Um, I'm running a VM on it with, I think, five gigabytes of memory. So maybe I will just add memory and test it once again. And, and of course, I will create a bug report. That's a good mm. point. Thanks a lot. Yeah, for, for that, I can tell you that for production, I mean, in the end, if you are thinking a big distribution, five gigabytes, I think it's not going to be enough. It's on, I think in the documentation, you will recommend eight for small environments, 16 for production and more yeah you're right medium-sized environments That's but still it, it would be very nice of course if someone from the community or at some point we can find time to make uni more efficient uh, so it can work on smaller raspberry Pis or whatever other hardware but open the back report anyway i think it could be interesting to have it there okay so, if there are no more questions about Unit 2020-201, I think I can give the floor to Vladimir. So, Vladimir, you can present if you want. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. So, starting presentation. Can you see my browser? Yes, we see the uni server. Okay. Can you make your font bigger, like just uh, uh, sure? There, that helps. Yeah, thanks. I'm old. Okay. Uh, so until now, there was only uh, it was not possible to move minions between proxies. The only possibility was to bootstrap the minion again. And now there is improvement. Um, so first some overview how moving minions works now. Mm, there are three steps. First is changing uh, master entry in minion configuration and restarting minion. Uh, then when minion reconnects through the new proxy, uh, so Unis server detects this change and updates the database accordingly. And final step is refresh the channels on the minion so it gets packages from the new proxy. Uh, this is uh, salt state that performs the first step. Uh, when it's initiated from SUSE major, it basically edits uh, one line in SUSE major conf and restarts uh, the minion. Uh, it expects the configuration in SUSE major conf file. Uh, in theory, uh, you can have uh, different configuration if you created it manually, if you didn't use standard bootstrap. And in such case, this salt states um, will fail and report an error. Uh, but you can still edit the configuration manually and restart the minion and every, everything should work the same as if it's initiated from SUSE measure. And so that's probably all from implementation details and now we can continue with the demo. Here I have uh, one minion and two chain proxies. And what's new that at minion connection page, uh, you can see now is connected to the second proxy uh, and new new thing is this change link. When I click and at this, uh, it shows this dialog where I 
can select new proxy. Uh, possibilities are none for direct connection to, to Unis server or I can choose different <coughs> proxy. So let's choose the other one and confirm it. And then it schedules uh, this, this salt state. Uh, it's here. You can see it change. Uh, it, it it did the change in the configuration from proxy to it changed to proxy and restarted the minion. And by now there should be already second event. Uh, that's the change in the channels where you can see it. Again, change the channel URL from proxy to, to proxy. Mm. And this feature works for uh, salt minions and SSH push minions. Uh, with SSH push minions, there is no config configuration stored on the minion, so it starts uh, with st only with um, the step two and three, and everything is initiated from uh, Unis server. Uh, and this feature can be used for moving proxies itself. Uh, for proxy, uh, you have to bootstrap it again as before. Uh, if I look, for example, here on proxy connection page, you can see that there is not the link. Uh, and, uh, you, you can move uh, individual minions as I showed here or you can use system set manager and in system set manager it's um, here on the mist and proxy tab where you can see there is basically uh, the same dialog as before but uh, if you go through uh, system set manager this change is applied on multiple minions at once. So and uh, third possibilities uh, that the same functionality is available through API. Um, so I think that's all. So are there any questions? Looks great, thanks. I think I already asked about this. This is implemented on web UI. I seem to remember the, there is uh, an API call. We still, we are still missing something at space CMD, right? Mm, yes, that's true. But anyway, for those of you that are used to SpaceMD, remember that you can also do arbitrary API calls from within SpaceMD. I cannot recall the command right now, but there is the possibility as well. So you don't need to handle all the authentication. Very well. Then now I will try to share the presentation from Ornella, I think it's this one. Nope. Mm. One minute, because I saw it. I think uh, I think I know what the problem is. That sadly, since you shared this after the meeting started, I cannot see it without reloading Teams. But if I reload, uh, that's, then there is. that's that's okay. Can I can I send it to you uh, by email? No, hold on. I mean, I think what I can do is try to share the screen. Mm -hmm. Then you will just need to, to uh, flip through it for me. But it's just a few slides anyway. 
And I think that now you should be able to see the screen. Yes. Yes, thank okay. you. Okay, now let me change to present. Okay. And very good. Then just tell me when you. Yeah, just you. you can just move to the next one. So hi everyone. This is just really a, a brief presentation of the changes that had happened in the documentation, mostly over the holiday period, uh, so that they are ready for now. Uh, there have not been any major uh, uh, changes in terms of the way uh, way things are organized. Uh, the changes are mostly of the um, the most changes are mostly about making things simpler, easier to use, and kind of getting winning a little bit more space in the navigation bar. So this is what the uh, uni documentation looks like right now with uh, lots of books. Not all of them are of the sa same relevance. Uh, some of them could have been bundled together. So if we move to the next slide, I will, we will start by showing actually what has happened. First of all, Quick Start has been moved to the top. We had it from quite a while now, for quite a while now, but uh, it was at the bottom. So it only makes actually sense when it's at the top. So this is the first uh, thing. Um, then next one, please. <clears throat> Uh, this is uh, installation and upgrade guides. These two guides, uh, upgrade is actually quite small in size and installation and upgrade are kind of similar operations by nature and they are often uh, grouped together. So if you just uh, click next, please, you will then see that they have been merged to a single book. Upgrade has been moved uh, at the same level as all of the other operations, but the structure remains the same. Uh, then the next change uh, is a specialized guide. So if you look at the bottom, we actually have four books called uh, one is sold guide, then we have large deployments and we have two quick start guides, which are teeny tiny books. The last ones, the, the uh, sold and large deployments, they are uh, significant in size. However, uh, they they do not really uh, are not the kind of the same relevance as the others and they could have been all bundled up in a specialized guys in a separate book which you can see uh, if you click next so everything is uh, accessible but uh, these topics are they have just been grouped in a way that uh, just so that they don't take actually as much space as before and uh, the next change was, I believe, should be about client configuration guide. Yes, uh, this was previously a lot of topics which could, uh, when I looked uh, at behind the scenes, they actually could have been grouped in a, in a different way. So if you click next, Julio, please, then you will see that this has been significantly reduced and it is a lot easier, actually, if you're just kind of visually checking to, for the for the topics. Yeah, that's OK. We can move to the next one uh, because I was on a roll and we were going to what could be done with administration guide. Uh, there was this was, a, again, a, a list of many, many topics. There wasn't really any other way to uh, group them other than uh, there wasn't any way to introduce uh, any new uh, level of uh, organizing the topics or, and no point to do it just uh, for the sake of changes. But the change that could have been done was to organize them alphabetically. So now these topics uh, actually are just listed in alphabetical order. And again, if you're just kind of scanning through them, it's a lot easier to find your topic rather than just going um, going through them as they are. And then I believe, as they were before, and then I believe that the, the final change, um, if you could just click next, yeah, you can just see I put here uh, before and after. Uh, the next the next image should be after uh, the second from the bottom book. You can also see that we are adding an extra book, uh, which is called Common Workflows. And this is where uh, descriptions of, of the like the title says Common Workflows would be. So um, this is uh, meant to be mainly uh, created by the people who are in the field, who are using uh, SUSE Manager in a very specific uh, specific ways and want to share this uh, knowledge with the others. So um, yeah, so like I uh, just a summary. So Quick Start has been moved at the top. The things have been uh, grouped or grouped or internally organized so that they are kind of bundled up in a more logical way. And uh, we have less items in the navigation bar and we have one extra book. And that's it. Thanks for doing that. Appreciate it. You're very welcome. It was a pleasure.
Yeah, I think the change is very interesting because the, the tree was growing yes. way too big in the first level and now it's easier to navigate. That's for Exactly, sure. exactly. Yes, I know that uh, I remember from many of the meetings that people actually mentioned that they mostly they use search bar and, you know, people would uh, look for the topics, not necessarily by reading through the book, but for those who do read and especially for those who are seeing these topics for the very first time, when they look at the things, at, when they want to, things, uh, to see things at a glance, it, I think it's a lot more digestible right now. So, uh, yeah, that would be all from me. Thank you. Any questions, <laughs> I suppose? Yeah. So, yeah, we have time for questions about the documentation or any other things you want to discuss as well. So are you taking contributions for that common workflows section? Yes, that will be actually that's that's the next stage. So um, there is more work to be done on the common workflows, uh, but the idea is to make it pretty easy for uh, everyone to start to add the content. Yeah. So. I was just wondering whether there are some news regarding the Ansible integration in Uyuni. The, what I can tell you for sure is that, that soon there will be a new version of Ansible updated, especially because of uh, some vulnerabilities that are pending. Uh, but other than that, I don't have any other news. Uh, maybe Donald? Is there anything we are going to do something about Ansible? Yeah, right now, um, are you using it? Uh, let me ask you this. Are you using the control node functions that we have now for you to enter an Ansible control node? Or what exactly are you looking for? I was giving it a, a try in the lab system, and I showed it to some of my customers, uh, which are using mainly Ansible and they are, were really um, excited when they saw that they have this really early Ansible control node and they were looking forward to see the progress on this. So they really like it and they want to see in which direction this might get going. Yeah, so um, obviously one of the directions we've thought about is uh, uh, allowing Ansible to be a communication method for uh, SUSE manager clients, but you know that's a ways down the road. Um, we're looking at doing other stuff with Ansible um, outside of the SUSE manager context, but in terms of our roadmap right now, we don't have any. Uh, you know, we're looking for customer input to know what exactly they want us to do next with it. Yeah. We, we don't have it designed right now to be a replacement for the Ansible platform that is uh, available and on a competitor space. Uh, mm -hmm. Not for SUSE manager to do that, but um, you know, if there's uh, customer driven uh, desires for us to augment what we're doing now, uh, we'd certainly like to hear about it. Yeah, so what most of my customers love about SUSE Manager is that they have the possibility to use SALT formula. So some of them are not very deep into SALT stack and they really like that they can simply assign formulas to host, set some settings. And what I heard from them uh, is, hey, it would be just awesome if they could do the same for Ansible roles so that we can assign the role uh -huh. to a system. That would be awesome. So. Maybe just like for salt, where you are like, uh, where you have to create the mapping between what you see in the user in interface and how is it it is mapped to the formula. Using this for Ansible roles, so that would be just awesome, I think. Well, now you now we have somebody's good Hack Week project that one, because formulas are an easy way to add stuff into the UI. Uh, yeah, actually, it's a nice shortcut. 
That's good feedback. Thank you. You're welcome. Should I enter it also on GitHub just for documentation purposes? Absolutely. Yeah. I'm going to do that. Yeah, yeah. Remember, of course, that the GitHub issues are not only for bugs. Those are the bugs <laughs> we add the label. But if you have any other suggestions, then you can just create a card there or at least send us an, an email at the user mailing list. Okay, more questions or thoughts, things that, things that you would like to see in uni, things that you would like to change. Remember, by the way, I always tell this, that the even if most of the times it's people from SUSE presenting at the uni community hours, it's for you to present as well. If you want to participate and present something at any session, just send me an email or send an email to to the user mailing list and we will schedule you i think if i recall correctly christian you were presenting in the yeah. past yeah so yeah. everyone else is invited don't be shy and I, also, and I also have an idea what i could present in some of the the next uh, community hours so but i will i will um, just drop you a, a mail and talk to you whether this is the right place <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very good. And it's always nice to have more people presenting. Yes. And by the way, uh, Christian has a nice new podcast about Linux topics. I, I heard Christian's <laughs> podcast last week. I think, though, it's only for German speakers, but um, it sounded promising and, and, and I really enjoyed it. Happy to hear. And we will talk about Uni in the next episode. I can uh, spoiler. <laughs> really cool. Awesome. Thank you, Christian. You're, you're welcome. Thanks a lot for the feedback. <laughs> Yeah, last uh, December, I presented on Uyuni at uh, OLF, Open Libre Free Conference, it used to be Ohio Linux Fest in Columbus, Ohio. Had some really good uh, positive feedback from the community there about Uyuni. Um, and I had a really good call with uh, somebody from Germany who was poking around and sort of found Uyuni and was like, oh my gosh, this is so powerful. How come it wasn't part of my life before? So anytime that you guys can get out and sort of evangelize for Uyuni, it's, it's, a, great, it's a great thing for all of us. It helps to make the, the product better and it helps to have more people uh, able to have better lives and uh, please keep the news going. That's great. Okay, thanks for the link to the postcard, Christian. I will make sure it's tweeted later. Thanks a lot. And if we don't have more questions or things we want to discuss, then maybe it's time, well, at least for some of us to start the weekend. <laughs> so I hope you really had a very, very nice uh, start of this year. Remember that we are available at the mailing lists in Gitter as well. So. Anything you need, something you want to suggest, bugs you want to report, use the mailing list, use Gitter, use the GitHub issues. And I hope I will see you again within one month on February 25th. So, see you soon. Have a Thanks very nice day. Thanks. Take care. Thanks, Bye. everyone. Bye. 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 Thanks, everyone. Bye.